Okay, now we have question number five from the C4 January 2019 International A-Level paper. Um, a trick question. Here we've got um, the angle X and angle Y are such that tan X equals M and 4 tan Y equals 8M plus 5, where M is a constant. Given, then, given that 16 sec squared x plus 16 sec squared y equals 537, find the two possible values of m. Okay, so let's deal with that first. We'll just start from over here. You can see everything. Okay, so now... Okay. Now, tan x equals m and 4 tan y equals 8m plus 5, where m is a constant. And um, here we're going to deal with sec squared. Right, so straight away in your mind, you should be thinking about the trig identities, tangent and sec secant. Okay, this, think about the trig identities. Okay? Now, you're not given the trig identities in the uh, formula sheet. And if you do happen to forget the trig identities, which you shouldn't by the time you've done all this revision. However, if you do happen to forget them, then there's at least one that you should, should be engraved in your brain since um, the AS, the time is when you did C1 and 2, okay? Which is basically that the sine squared, oops, I'll write it in full, sine squared theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. So sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of the same angle will always give you 1. Now that is an identity that's really important for you to remember. Very important. Okay. And from this you can derive all the other identities. Like for example here, we're going to, we want an identity that involves secant and tangent. So what we can say is, okay, how do I get a tangent? Well, if I divide by cosine squared theta, because that's the other thing, the other identity you should know is that the tangent of an angle is always equal to the sine of an angle divided by the cosine of an angle. Those are the two identities that should be in your head. And from those, all the other ones can be derived, basically. So if you want to find an, a, 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 an identity involving tan squared theta and sec squared theta, you can divide all of this by cosine squared theta. So sine squared theta over cosine squared theta plus cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta equals 1 over cosine squared theta. So sine squared theta over cosine squared theta is tan squared theta and cosine squared theta over itself is 1. And 1 over cosine squared theta gives you, well, this is one of the reciprocal functions. So 1 over cosine theta, what you do is you look at the third letter. Okay, it's the reciprocal of cosine, so it's going to be secant theta. So this will be 1 over cosine squared theta will be secant squared theta. So it's this identity that we're going to be using, tan squared theta plus 1 equals x squared theta, for us to be able to solve this problem. Okay, so I know that m is tan x, okay, and I know that secant squared x secant squared x okay can be written as tan squared x plus one tan squared x plus one which is like tan x all squared plus one now tan x equals m so i can rewrite that as m squared plus one so i know this is going to be 16 times brackets m squared plus one okay and i also know from here that the tan of y is equal to 8m plus 5 over 4. Okay, and I can do a similar thing here. I know that the, therefore um, the secant squared of y is going to be basically uh, tan squared of y plus 1. Sorry write that properly the tangent squared of y plus one okay let me just continue that down here so we've got more space so we got the um, tan 
squared of y plus 1, okay, which is the same as secant squared y. Okay, I can replace the tan squared y. This is like tan y squared plus 1. I can replace the tan y with 8m plus 5 over 4. So I can, I can say this is 8m plus 5 over 4, all squared, and plus 1. Okay, so that's 8m plus 5 over 4. Now we can square this. If I square this, I'm going to have 8m all squared, which is 64m squared, plus 2 times 8m times 5, which is going to be 80m plus 5 squared which is 25 and over 4 squared which is 16 and plus 1. So now I have an expression for 6 squared y and I have an expression for 6 squared x and when we want to now put that into this okay, um, equation and then find the values of m. So let's put them into this equation. We've got 16 6 squared x so 16 times what we have here, m squared plus 1. Okay, and we got plus 16 sex squared y, plus 16 times sex squared y. Now sex squared y is equal to all of this. Okay, 16 times 64 m squared plus 80 m plus 25 over 16 and then plus 1 and that's equal to what? 537 so now we have to solve this equation I think I need to put this on the next page let's just continue down here okay so now let's expand this bracket you get 16 m squared plus 16 plus now the 16 will cancel with the 16 when you when I multiply this by this term the 16 will cancel out so you're left with 64 m squared plus 80 m plus 25 and when I multiply the 16 by the 1 I'm going to get plus 16 and that's equal to 537 all right, so we have 16m squared plus 64m squared. 16, 64 plus 16 is, that's going to be 74 plus 6, that's 80m squared. And our m terms is just 80m, okay, plus 80m. And then our number terms are 16 plus 16 plus 25 minus 537. So that's going to be 32 Plus, let's just do that on the calculator. <clears throat> so that's 32 plus 25. Okay, 57. And you've got to subtract from that 537. Gives you minus 480. And that's equal to zero. Now, 6 eighths of 48. So, yeah, you can get rid of the zeros and divide by 8. So you'll have m squared plus m minus 6 equals 0. We divide it basically by 80 altogether. And now we can factorize this. It's actually factorized because 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so we need a difference of 1 and a product of, of negative 6. So it's going to be plus 3, m plus 3 and m minus 2. So that means m is equal to negative 3 and m is equal to 2. Let's see if there's any conditions attached to this. Find the two possible values of m. Okay, that's fine. All right, so those are the two possible values of m. And that's the answer to this question. Then it says, given that the angle x, I think I need to move to the next part, next page. Let's see. All right, let me just take this to the next page. We run out of space here. I'll pause it while I'm doing that. Okay, so now we found that m is equal to 3 and minus 2. Was it 3 and minus 2? It was minus 3 and 2. So m equals minus 3 and 2. Those are the two values of m. 
Um, it says, given that the angle X and the angle Y are acute angles, find the exact value of sine X. Okay, let's just go back here and take um, these things which I think we might need. Okay. Okay. So the angle X and the angle Y are acute. Find the value of sine X. Let's start with sine X. Okay. So now we know that the tan of X equals M. Okay. So it could either be 2 or minus 3. However, if it's acute, the tangent of acute angles will always be positive. In fact, all of them, tan, sine, and cos will be positive. So we can say that if as um, x is acute, therefore m must equal 2. All right? So therefore we can say, um, yeah, that therefore we can say that uh, the tangent of x is equal to 2. Okay? Uh, let's just, we need to find the sine of x. So let's just make a, a right angle triangle. There's different ways of doing this, but I, I prefer this way here. Let's call this angle x. If this is x and the tangent of x is 2, then the opposite divided by the adjacent must give us 2. So that's like 2 over 1. Right? So therefore the hypotenuse by Pythagoras is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 1, which is going to be 4 plus 1, which is 5, the square root of 5. So therefore, we can say that the sine of x is going to be 2 over root 5, okay, which technically you should write as a rationalized denominator. So we multiply both the top and bottom by root 5, we get 2 root 5 over 5. That's the value of sine x. That's part b. Okay, then part c says cot y. Now, we know that um, tan y is equal to uh, 8, 8m plus 5 over 4. 8m plus 5 over 4. And the values of m can either be minus 3 or 2. Now, if m is minus 3, then the tangent of y will be negative and y won't be acute. So again, m must be 2. So we can say that the tangent of y is going to be 16 plus 5, which is 21 over 4. Therefore, remember the cot is the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. So the, therefore, the cotangent of y must be 4 over 21. And there's the answer to part C. And we're done. Thank you for watching.